I describe the mood here in Davos as euphoric. You picking that up? I'd say one of my concerns is people don't seem to be concerned. But there's actually several layers of moods going on. So on the political side, it's open versus closed, nationalism versus globalism. On the tech side, there's always a buzzword, big data, climate change, Internet of Things. This year, the Twin Towers are AI and blockchain. And then I always look for kind of underlying themes. And um, the one that's intriguing me this year is uh, Techlash, uh, which I would say is the backlash against technology. Often here, tech has been about enabling change. Mm -hmm. And now there are questions about what uh, environment those change might actually challenge society. In what quarters are you finding that? Everywhere uh, or just in pockets? I think um, uh, in many places. Uh, uh, listening to people on the business side, the question of employment uh, backlash, uh, what happens to the four million people whose title is driver? You know, e-commerce is great, but there's 3.5 million people whose jobs are uh, checkout. And what will that mean economically? And what will that mean uh, in terms of political You wins? find Davos at all useful for anticipating policy direction or even markets? Or is it better as a contrarian indicator? Uh, it, to be an investor, you basically have to drive uncommon wisdom. I come to Dama, Davos to find what the common wisdom is. Okay, so more of a contrarian indicator. Well, sometimes last year the dollar was supposed to be so strong, you know, perhaps not so much. But I think you have to start with what people believe. For example, this year there is an extraordinary recognition of the fact that, you know, last year every OECD country grew. And this year nobody is forecasting a recession. Goldman Sachs is saying looks good to the middle of 2019. You know, that is an incredibly strong mood. So as an investor, that gives me a problem. Mm -hmm. because uh, growth and investment returns don't always perfectly correlate. As interest, rises, uh, interest rates uh, show up, markets will react. And then as a long-term investor, I have to begin to plan an exit to the cycle and, and think about that position. Well, let's talk about that. Is now the time to be thinking, boy, I'd better exit the investments I can exit while I'm able to exit them before there's a, who knows when it's coming, but before there's a downturn? or some kind of you know, uh, drop in the pace of economic growth? You know, we have been returning a substantial amount of money to our investors, but the question is, where do we redeploy? And there's always something to do, but it's a bit different at this point in the cycle. So even if the stock markets are gonna be okay for a while, I have to worry about four years from now. Yeah. And uh, what I don't wanna to do today is buy levered beta. So buying the market at a high point ahead of a recession is, is not a good strategy. But that's not really what TPG does. Well, from time to time, the industry has done it. What we tend to do is actually industry driven. So bottoms up, where are there areas that are changing that will not be so affected by the economy? Like one of the things I'm learning here is uh, media this week. The amount of media across the amount of different channels from video to, to blogs to tweets, uh, I think there's a massive change going on and, and I'm interested in how that's gonna play out as an investment opportunity. You want to invest in media? Perhaps. At a time when media is undergoing its, perhaps its greatest disruption ever. Uh, it will be sorted out uh, years ago. Yes, I'm certainly hoping it will it be. It will be sorted out. So we've kind of figured out what's happening with uh, movies, with Netflix. We've kind of figured out on music with leadership out of Spotify. What's fascinating to me is how will your business sort itself out? And I don't say, I don't claim to have the answers, but it's an interesting time to ask the question. Do you think Jeff Mez Bezos made a smart move buying the Washington Post? Uh, he will have made a smart move depending on what happens from here. His use of data, the idea of aggregation and size. Uh, I think we're entering a very interesting chapter. So my point is uh, we want to be careful not to buy the economy late in the cycle, but there's a ton of change going on. Justin Trudeau said, uh, never uh, has change been so fast and never again will it be so slow. I think that's an interesting uh, idea for investors. You're hitting the fundraising trail later this year for another flagship buyout fund. What do investors want from TPG that they didn't want the last time you were fundraising or they didn't want 10 years ago? You know, they always want returns, so that's constant and, and that's what we aim to deliver. But I think what investors are realizing is that there's this fundamental shift from the incumbent to the disruptor in many, many industries. So one of the great things about TPG is we happen to set up on the West Coast, so we live in the world of disruption. So they're increasingly interested in how we're investing in industry change 
and where we're positioned for that change. Uh, and you know, 20 years ago, it was buying steady businesses, using leverage, not making many changes. Today, investors want to know, how are you changing your strategy and your companies for the future? Is the future of buyouts or private equity, let's call it more in sector specialization of that variety than it is in sort of a general purpose fund the way it's been in the past? In the past, the industry was often organized by tool, buyouts, venture, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, if you really look inside how we're organizing TPG, we've done a lot more to build our sectors because what's happening in small tech companies certainly shapes what's happening in large, small healthcare, large. So we're building our investment insight not by geography or by type of investment, those can be commoditized quickly, but by insight and industry. So it sounds like yes. Yes. Certainly the future of TPG, but what about everybody else? Are they gonna continue behaving the way they've always behaved and you're out there on your own on the West Coast doing something different? Well, it's always been fun to be out there on, on their own. <laughs> well, not totally on their own on the West Coast. I think the industry has proven its ability to adapt and evolve over 25 years, and I think it will continue to evolve. But uh, hopefully they're not listening to the show, so they won't know exactly what we're doing. <laughs>